if you're just putting in biochar, you're putting in condos for the microbes. But if you inoculate the biochar, you're putting in furnished condos complete with food on the table. Yeah. And, and one of the ways we know that biochar helps improve yields is by uh, providing conditions that favor beneficial microbes. In the case of nitrogen-fixing microbes and mycorrhizae, there has been research, research that, have shown, that has shown that when biochar is present, those, those microbes are, they do better. Um, the whole idea of inoculating biochar with microbes, because, you know, of course, when you take the biomass out of the pyrolyzer, it's very sterile. With time, after you add it to soil, that's where com communities start building on the surfaces mm -hmm. because biochar is very, very porous. A lot of people talk about it like as, as, as a reef in the ocean. It's very, very porous structure, and that's where all the microbes kind of live. So, you know, what I'm getting at is that, yes, we know that once it's in soil, over time, things build up and you get, you know, microbial communities flourishing on there. Um, a more recent idea has been to inoculate the biochar with nutrients, uh, microbes, and or both. Um, I'm not aware of any actual research where that has been done, but there, I know there's a lot of people who are doing it in their own backyard. Um, to try, you know, because it's pretty much a stripped material to try mm -hmm. to see if you can put it in and get it get it going kind of right away because otherwise you put it in, you know, the, the experience I've had, we didn't inoculate it and the first year we really didn't see any effect at all. Effects started happening in years two, three, four, and then we had to stop the study because that's often how things work in research. But, it, you know, things were just getting better every year uh, from that point. Economic benefits of biochar that have been demonstrated by research are uh, increase in pH in, in acidic soils. The flip side question is what about alkaline soils that would not benefit from increased pH? You do add a small amount of nutrients to the soil when you add biochar because any biochar contains some ash. You know, in, in vegetation there's always some mineral matter and you don't, you don't, most of that you don't lose when you're making the biochar. You still have it in the form of ash. If your soil needs calcium, potassium, um, you're going to be adding it and, and it might help. But that's not a very long lasting benefit because, you know, stuff moves in soil. If, it, in, if uh, plants don't take it up, it might get washed out with the rain. Um, so it's, it's, it's kind of like fertilizers. If, if, you know, that kind of benefit you, if that's really what you were capitalizing on, you'd have to do it again every year. However, we know that biochar lasts for a very long time in soil, and it's uh, the capacity of the biochar to retain nutrients gets better with time. As, as the biochar weathers and interacts with other soil microbes, other components of soil, it, it develops a nice capacity to retain nutrients. And that's great because that means that whatever you add with compost, with manure, with fertilizers, you'll be better able to retain and in a way that the plants can use it. So, and that's something that builds up with time. And, and that's quite unique to biochar because most amendments you put in soil kind of decompose rather rapidly and, and after a few years, uh, you don't really reap any benefits from, from them anymore. Biochar is, we, saw, we already, said it was very porous so it's able to retain moisture. I haven't seen and I look data research done on actually showing that yields or, or more yield was obtained because biochar help retain moisture over in bad years or, or whatnot you know it's, it's just kind of theoretical because it's basically like a sponge so it just makes sense and, and when you, if you do tests in the lab you put a column of soil, a column of soil plus biochar and you pour water on top you're going to start seeing water running off the bottom of the soil only fa faster than you will uh, when you have biochar. It just holds on to the water. Having said that, um, it's not necessarily going to lead to more waterlogged conditions because since it's very porous, it, you know, it's going to have, if you have a little sponge, it can be full of water, but the space around it can be relatively dry. So I think, you know, I don't think you'd, you'd get into problems with aeration, for example. Uh, biochar also tends to lead to better soil aggregation over time, and we all know that helps uh, aeration and water infiltration. So if we know that most of our nitrogen comes from our uh, soil organic matter, 
How do we build our soil organic matter? There are things that we can do to actually build it. Cover crop. Compost will help a little bit, but the amount you add in a compost application is pretty small compared to how much organic matter is in the soil. Cover crop. Long headed, right on the head. Cover crops. If you can grow a cover crop, that's a lot of carbon. So when we're applying about four tons of biochar per acre, we're adding about a ton of carbon, and that carbon is going to be very long lasting. It's going to stay there for, for thousands of years. Don't degrade the biochar at least not the very the part of it that's very stable and that's why it stays in the soil for centuries to millennia and that's why it's a tool for uh, carbon sequestration and that's one, one of the environmental benefits of the biochar. Brought to you by the Avian Aquamizer, our poop-free chicken water. Visit us on the web at www.avianaquamizer.com.